Washington Grown is made possible by funding from the Washington State Department of Agriculture and the USDA Specialty Crop Block Grant Program. And by the Potato Farmers of Washington. Learn why Washington is home to the world's most productive potato fields and farmers by visiting potatoes.com. Hi everyone, I'm Christy Gordson and welcome to Washington Grown. Some of the biggest protectors of our planet are our lawns and grasses, like this beautiful field that I'm in in Connell. In today's episode, we're gonna learn how grass seeds are helping us protect and reclaim the land. I'm visiting a grass seed farm. You guys love it? It's a love-hate relationship. <laughs> Everybody's at the lake. Right. And we're out here and it's 110 degrees. And I'm making a black bean empanada at Kismet in Spokane. I could just eat one of these and go lie down yeah. into a blissful nap <laughs> with this in my tummy. Then I'm learning how Washington grass seeds are being used to reclaim land in a sand quarry. Our job is to make those products and still take care of the land. All this and more today on Washington Grown. This is my favorite part of the day. <laughs> you gave me this job just to keep me occupied, didn't you? This is what fine dining is all about right here. Oh, 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 oh. I could eat these all day. <laughs> you all make this look so simple and easy. Cheers to that. <laughs> I only hang out in pretty potato fields. <laughs> Up in Spokane's Hilliard neighborhood, there's an unassuming little place that's been stirring up quite a buzz in the community. Here at Kismet, Chef Daniel Gonzalez is using his culinary expertise, working in some of the finest Washington restaurants, to create a menu that's fresh, fun, and unlike any other. But to proprietor Monica York and Chef Dan, Kismet is more than just a restaurant, it's a dream come true. The word kismet technically means fate. The way that we've always used it in our relationship is like when something works out like fortuitously for us, we just say that it's kismet. The food was delicious, authentic. Friendly neighborhood bar vibes, I guess, where you feel welcome. Honestly, it's probably one of my favorite restaurants now. We've been working so hard for other people for so long. It's like when the space was available to us, we we're not gonna say no. The food is amazing. Oh, it's all really fresh. You can tell that they take pride in the ingredients that they're selecting. Green's Fresh Market is right down the street and he has our phone number. So whenever he has like maybe an excess of something or he has something he thinks that we would like, he calls us. So we just walk right down walk the street right down. <laughs> yeah, and get it from him. Don't miss later in the show when Chef Dan and I make a black bean empanada. You could eat one of these for dinner mm -hmm. and be ready for a nap 15 minutes later. Mm -hmm. Next time you're spending family time out in the yard, look down. Chances are the grass beneath your feet was first grown in Washington. I'm in Othello catching up with Jason Miller and Cody of Highmark Farms for a lesson in growing and processing grass seed. Why is this area a good place to grow grass seed? The number one reason, water. Irrigation. We get the right weather. We have great ability for water and we are dry in the summer. You know, we're really fortunate there. Washington grown grass seed I, I think is some of the best in the world and that sounds crazy because it's a big world but it's really actually pretty factual. RJ Schmidt of Clearwater Seed explained that grass seed is a great rotation crop putting nutrients back into the soil after other crops. Columbia Basin I think a lot of people think of potato production but you can't grow potatoes on potatoes on potatoes so grass seed is a very good rotation crop. And grass seed works really well with potatoes. We so do if a lot it's not of good things. Potatoes. Yeah, we do a lot of good things for together. In order to grow great grass, you have to have the correct amount of water. We monitor the moisture in the ground right now. We're pretty wet. We're trying to keep that moisture oh, so that yeah, crop has that quite a lot to pull from. You guys love it? It's a love hate relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's at the lake, and, <laughs> right. and we're out here, and it's 110 degrees. We leave the field and head over to Highmark Seeds to get a closer look at cleaning and processing the harvested grass seed. This is our seed stock line, so all okay. of our seed that we plant with in the fall uh -huh. usually gets ran through this line. We're doing some VNS bluegrass right now. Okay. So in here, there's these doubles, there's other weeds, 
As we look through here, there's all kinds of different things. Throughout the process, we'll use the combinations of speed, centrifugal force. To get all the other stuff out of To there. get all the other stuff out and make something that's uniform at the end. Native Washington grasses are helpful to both farmers and consumers. And the primary reason for Snake River wheatgrass is Bureau of Land Management on forest fire reclamation. Reclamation basically, you can think about any project out there, whether it's a construction project, sometimes it's a harvest project, like logging. And you're disturbing soils, right? And obviously long term, if we disturb too many soils, that's not a good thing. A lot of grasses that we produce are going to reclaim these disturbed soils. As the climate and the environment becomes a, a bigger talking issue, grasses are a major part of our ecosystems. And whether it is a 208 swale in downtown wherever that's filtering that water coming off of the pavement, or it's a thousand acres of CRP, if you look at all those projects, grasses are the base of all of those mixes. My dad used to say, Mother Nature doesn't like to be naked. If you don't seed something, she's gonna grow something. And a lot of times it seems like in agriculture, it's weeds. And so if we can get ahead of her and say, hey, let's provide some seed that we think is more beneficial, maybe she'll grow that instead. Farmers markets are chock full of fresh local food, but if you're looking for a special way to eat your veggies, well then look no further. Today, Seattle Samosa is bringing a delicious and traditional Indian snack to the Renton Farmers Market. So my name is Vikas and uh, we are about authentic and fresh samosas. Samosas are uh, really the street food in India. Okay. And that's what I have grown up, you know, eating it morning, afternoon, night, late night. <laughs> okay. We are trying to bring the actual flavors from India and we want to make this snack like an everyday snack for everybody. Today, we're trying out a special samosa filled with peas and potatoes. It's called uh, Punjabi samosas. Punjabi. The main ingredients is potatoes and green peas. All right, now I'm understanding that these are pretty high spice level, right? I won't say that because <laughs> my spice level is a little bit higher. Look at this beautiful little package. Yeah, just dig in. All right, here we go. Cheers. Mm. Yeah, so good. And these potatoes are just so soft and yes. moist. I can understand why you say you eat these all day long. All right, let's see what the people at this farmer's market think of these samosas. You both like peas and potatoes, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, but I bet you've never had them like this before. Mm, probably not. All right, let's give it a shot. Here we go. Not yet, you'll get there. You'll get there. Wow, yeah, that's really good. That's good, I never thought it would hit like this. Fresh, it's flavorful. Mm. This is nice and zippy, like acidic and a little spicy. You can really taste the spices. Oh, wait, some got a little heat to it. <laughs> Are you gonna want some too, Brady? Are you gonna want some of that too? Creamy, but also crunchy on the outside. If I keep on eating, yeah, that's really good. <laughs> She's like, I want it. Do you want some of these? Later. <laughs> Later. A couple years, all right, and then you can have one of these. Who knew that you could just wrap up peas and potatoes right? <laughs> in something like that and create such an awesome dish? Yeah, no, this is delicious. <laughs> that's not bad for just peas and potatoes. <laughs> Grassia is a very essential part to a healthy environment, producing oxygen, filtering carbon. I've got a question for you. How much oxygen does a 50 by 50 yard produce? The answer will be coming up after the break. Coming up, I'm making a black bean empanada at Kismet in Spokane. You could eat one of these for dinner mm -hmm. and be ready for a nap mm -hmm. 15 minutes later. Mm -hmm. And we're in the kitchen at Second Harvest, trying out some baked spaghetti squash with beef and veggies. So a 50 foot by 50 foot yard produces enough oxygen for a family of four. We're back at Kismet in Spokane. Although their menu claims to be Latin inspired, the incredible flavors Chef Dan is whipping up in the kitchen push Kismet outside the boundaries of typical labels. It's kind of a unique combination of like Mexican and Spanish cuisine. Very vibrant with the flavors and the presentation's awesome. A little twist on Mexican, maybe with a South American appeal. It's just the kind of food I like. The food is pretty upscale, but we try to make it an approachable atmosphere because I don't want anyone to be intimidated by the menu. Proprietor Monica York and her partner and chef Daniel Gonzalez work hard to make sure Kismet feels comfortable for anyone who walks through the door. It looks like this so that everyone is welcome and then they realize that food is for everyone. It's high end. Mm -hmm. Cuisine. I had to learn some of the words on the menu, so I totally understand. <laughs> yeah. That was the easiest part of my job in working with him, is I'm like, 
genuinely enthusiastic about the food. So I don't have to be like, you're gonna like that. Or be like, no, you have to order you, that. You're gonna love so, it. Yeah, we didn't know what we were getting into when we walked in, because it is that bar feel. I don't think you would expect to kind of get these upscale plates, right? You kind of walk in and it's kind of this bar feel, very relaxed and it's nice. You come in and the, the plate presentation is excellent and you get these complex plates, which is fantastic. I'm going to be cooking with Chef Dan. Mm -hmm. What are we going to make? Uh, the smoked cheese and black bean empanada. Looking forward to it. Well, cheers. Thank you cheers. so much. Absolutely. Thank you. For having us. Yes. Empanadas, comfort food, but there's so many different kind of empanadas you can make. Right? Yeah. So like, there's dessert ones you can make with apple. Awesome. Uh, Thanksgiving time and all that comes around. Pumpkin is a really popular Ooh, one to make. Yeah. Um, black beans for us is kind of something that we can get year round. Sure. We can get from Washington. Yeah. And we can make sure that we're yeah. using that. And you um, you get these from a local. Yeah. Just the Spokane seed. There's a yeah. whole bunch of beans and legumes and things that they get there. Yeah. And I love black that. beans are one of them. We start by stretching out a pie dough, then add in the black beans mixed with smoked cheese. So I'm going to put a little bit in mine. smoked cheese? It's cold smoked, so everybody's like, oh, smoked cheese is going to melt and do everything. Our bartenders have a smoke gun. Oh, OK. Which came in handy. That then does we have learned a how really to do good it. smoky flavor. Yeah. Some of these ingredients are this will be extremely for local. Yes. Like, how so, local are they? So local that um, <laughs> my grandma lives in central Washington and okay. gets a lot of stuff for me. Thank you, grandma. Yeah, thank you. Exactly. Thank you, grandma. This is a healthy portion yes. of beans. So we're going to just take that and fold that over. Okay. And then we're going to just pinch right here and then just continue to pinch every so often. Mine does not look anything it's fine. at all we'll, like We'll yours. fix it. As yeah. soon as your thumb pushes so down, I need you're to use this finger too. There. And then okay. there. And there. There we go. There it goes. See, Perfect. I yeah. just needed a little, a little more instruction. <laughs> That's it. I mean, and now yeah. they're just going to go yeah. into okay. the fryer and we'll be able to enjoy one. Oh my gosh. I could smell those. All the Perfect. way across the room. Right they on. smell so good. And look at how crispy they are. Yeah. We start by plating with some house made lobna and salsa verde. Your lovely empanada right Thank there. You. Over the top, we add a special crema sauce and some pickled jalapenos. And that's Yay. it. That looks so good. So these are the kind of things that you have to be careful. It could be, could be nice and nuclear hot in the middle, inside. Yes. I took too big of a bite, so Move I up. couldn't talk. No problem. That's so good, though. You could eat one of these for dinner mm -hmm. and be ready for a nap 15 mm -hmm. minutes later. Mm -hmm. I like the smokiness yeah. of the cheese. It's like the cold smoke gives it like a subtle smoke. It's not like Texas barbecue. Yeah. This is like a little bit lighter. You're right. I could just eat one of these and go lie down yeah. into a blissful nap <laughs> with this in my tummy. Perfect. <laughs> to get the recipe for Kismet's smoked cheese and black bean empanada, visit wagrown.com. Okay, so today we are talking seeds. And seeds is such an underutilized part of the garden and cooking that I think more people should be taking advantage of. And seed saving, truly, you guys, you can't do it wrong. And if it doesn't grow, Try again. It's not a big deal. There's nothing on the line here. And so for flowers, a lot of the times, like if you have a poppy or a sunflower, you can usually just let those do their thing in the garden and then go and get the poppies, pour the seeds into like one of these. Um, you want a little bit of airflow for your seeds. That's why most seeds are packaged in like a, a paper bag, so don't put them in plastic. But go ahead and just pour them on in there. If you really, really like something, bring it inside dry it and save it. You can just set it either to dry just in your kitchen. It can be kind of pretty. You can put it on something like this, like a cookie sheet, and you can just set it in front of a window and you can dry it that way. And so you're just going to kind of take them and you're going to massage it like this. But you can see the seeds there and you pull them apart, have them dry, and then just massage them apart and put them in this. And if you do by chance live next to a seed farmer, just be very courteous, um, especially the brassica farmers, because you can have cross-pollination issues and we don't want to cause the farmers any trouble. Squash and gourds are a really easy, fun one for beginners to try and plant. And so these ones have nice large seeds, they're easy to dry, and you can throw them in your garden for next year. So we're gonna cut this open here. So we're gonna go through there and we're just gonna kind of pull the seeds to the top. You don't have to get super messy with it. And we're gonna put them in a colander. We're just gonna get the goop and everything off them. And we're just gonna pat dry. 
And then we're just simply gonna set this in a sunny place. Like that's it, you guys. We're gonna set it on a nice table and we are going to let the sun do its work. It's probably gonna take about two weeks and there you go, friends. I hope that this really encourages you to get in the garden, to play with seeds, whether it be flowers, whether it be fruit, foods, and just have fun experimenting with your family and learning the process of how all these things grow. Coming up, I'm learning how Washington grass seed is being used to reclaim a local sand quarry. Our job is to make those products and still take care of the land. When a natural disaster happens, it's nice to know that authorities have plans in place to keep people safe. That's why today I'm meeting with WSDA Natural Disaster Program Director Aaron Cole. When disaster strikes, this critical program focuses on the preparedness, support, and emergency response in the ag sector. The most important part of planning is identifying those coordinating partners that you want to work with during a chaotic environment. Because the last thing that you want is, is you know, trying to figure out how to build the plane while you're already flying it. Give me an example of what happens when something has hit, whether it be a wildfire, a flood. What happens then? What do you guys do? Disasters and emergencies start locally. So from a state perspective, you know, we are, are primed and ready to support when needed and when asked. Washington state is a home rule state which means that the, the initial responsibility and roles for response start on that local level of government, which in Washington is the county authority. And when they have exceeded their threshold of resources available to respond to that hazard, then they can elevate their need to a state level. You know, I think it's really cool that as we uh, travel around Washington State and we explore, it's nice to know that WSDA has these uh, policies and agencies in place. So when dis disaster strikes, and we know that it will, you guys got our back. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, there, you know, I think it's, it is cool to, to recognize too that, you know, WSDA does think about emergencies, you know, all hazards, be it animal health emergencies, those big news headlines around highly pathogenic avian influenza or a foreign animal disease, or those big headlines around invasive moths and hornets and giant hornets yeah. and what we do about that. But beyond that too, there's, you know, we are invested in preparing the agricultural industry and supporting our local partners on the county and tribal level when they have to respond to a natural disaster that impacts their direct lands and jurisdictions. And WSDA is not alone in that. Washington State has great agencies that think towards how we can better support and recover from and respond to all hazards. The rolling hills of North Spokane have a secret, something unique to this corner of the Northwest, sand. I'm here with Brian Ellingson, a superintendent with Central Premix, as his team mines this precious resource. We are at one of our fine sand locations and we remove fine sand for the use in concrete and asphalt. The fine sand closes up the gaps on the bottom end of a concrete mix and it offers really good finishability. Other parts of the country do not have this resource like this, so we're pretty fortunate in the Spokane area that we have this up north. Deposited here by the Great Missoula Floods, crews now work diligently collecting the sand. A lot of our sites just have one employee with one loader on it, and we have dump trucks that are in and out of here on a daily basis. What are we seeing happening we are, over here? We are seeing one of our loader operators and he is removing sand and reclaiming slopes at the same time. So eventually, because those are kind of steep cliffs, will those be? Those will all be rolled in and it'll all look natural and flowing. Rolling out steep hills is the first step Central Premix takes against a common side effect of resource gathering, erosion. It's their mission to be great stewards of the land they work. 
This area behind us was not this low before. You know, it was rolling hills just like it is now, because yeah. we did put it back to a state where it looks natural, uh -huh. but yet we removed average about 30 feet out of here. And you would know that by looking at it. Yep, we reclaimed it. We, we put in slopes that were manageable, so erosion wasn't a issue. And we work with the local seed company, Clearwater, mm -hmm. and they make a blend up that we spread out and it grows grass. The seeds used are not random. Central Premix uses Washington grass seeds to help return these work areas to their natural state. We use a lot of fescue, and it is really good with erosion. You see it along our highways and freeways uh -huh. because it's so good with erosion, has a good root base. These clumps like this, that's yeah. what keeps the erosion down. That's not going anywhere. Mm -mm. If it was not there during an event, say we have a freeze thaw and, and a lot of rain, it would create trenches and washouts and things like that. Yeah. And the wind, the wind blowing on sand, it's no different than being out in the desert yeah. where there isn't any vegetation. To Brian and others in the industry, it is critical to help the environment recover. Doing so allows our modern world to exist alongside a more healthy planet. Mining is controversial, but imagine our world with no asphalt, no concrete for sidewalks, no concrete for the foundation of your house. Can you imagine the cars and traffic on the road and the amount of emissions that would be dust flying into the air? I mean, some people don't take the time to think about what it would be like without it. Our job is to make those products and still take care of the land and put it back to a state that's natural and appealing and good for everybody, including wildlife. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's a good thing. Yeah. Welcome back. We're in the kitchen at Second Harvest Food Bank in Spokane, and we want to thank Second Harvest for allowing us to be in this beautiful uh, cooking, uh, teaching kitchen that we're in. And you, you Laurent, you've Ma actually many memories here. Yes. I did uh, plenty of uh, cooking class. Yeah. Yes, and it was a great. It's a great place. It's a good, uh, good feeling. You know, you you work for others, and it's it's charitable. It, it makes you feel good. And it's a process that is ever ending. I mean, they're still working out there right now as we speak. Exactly. Yeah, so we're extremely grateful for Second Harvest Food Bank. We love them a lot. And we get to taste a lot of lovely food from allrecipes.com here. And of course, my taste testers who you just heard from. Uh, we have uh, Tomas over here and Laurent over here. Hello. Thank you for Hello. being here. And today is baked spaghetti squash with beef and veggies, and I have to be honest, oh. I don't think I've ever had spaghetti squash before. Okay. Coming from Europe or from France, especially, not too many squash dish, not too many squash variety, right? Somebody asked me to, to, to get a, a spaghetti squash in the supermarket, <laughs> and I was looking for spaghetti, uh, or a very thin squash, and suddenly I see that big giant rug, rugby ball yellow, <laughs> and, right. and that's a spaghetti squash. This is by Robin. And Robin says, baked spaghetti, squash, peppers, and onions are mixed with beef and cheese in this delicious casserole. Nice.
side. This is a great looking casserole. And you can see the spaghetti strands, right. the squash. It almost looks like grated cheese. It almost yes, looks like a taco it is. filling. It's That's delicious. perfect for kids to think they are eating <laughs> right. pasta. They are eating pasta, but they are eating actually a vegetable. It has a nice uh, kind of like a taco casserole taste to it to yeah. me. Right, exactly. Yeah. I keep, I mean, my brain keeps wanting to like have a side of corn chips or, you know, mm -hmm. put this in the corn tortilla, but it is very good and very flavorful. And, and it has a nice, not like a lot of other squash, but it's very puree-like. This right. has some crunch, does some does? texture. Yes. Yeah. I like that, I like that's, the texture That's very beautiful. Mm -hmm. If you want to recreate uh, this recipe, tag us on Facebook and Instagram. And one of the easiest ways to actually see Washington Grown is on YouTube. So subscribe to our YouTube channel and check us out. Yes. I like and that. And then make, make some of these gosh. delicious Dishwash. recipes, delicious. right? Delicious. <laughs> yeah. To get the recipe for baked spaghetti squash with beef and veggies, visit wagrown.com. Not only is grass beautiful, but it's helping us cool the climate and reclaim public and private land. That's it for this episode of Washington Grown. We'll see you next time.